Good morning children. It's nice to be back with you all again and welcome to this Bible sharing session. Today's sharing is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 14 verses 1 to 23 and it's entitled Jonathan Attacks the Philistines. Before we read the Bible text, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we praise and thank you for your protection over all our children. We also praise and thank you that though we cannot meet in person, we can still learn from your word together like this. And Lord, we ask that you bless all the children with attentiveness, open their hearts and minds to learn from your word. And may your word be their firm guide always. In Jesus' name, Amen. We shall now move on to the Bible reading. Please turn to 1 Samuel chapter 14. And we're going to read verses 1 to 23. Let's read together. Verse 1. One day, Jonathan, son of Saul, said to the young man bearing his armor, Come, let's go over to the Philistine outpost on the other side. But he did not tell his father. Saul was staying on the outskirts of Gibeah under a pomegranate tree in Migron. With him were about 600 men, among whom was Ahijah, who was wearing an ephod. He was a son of Ichabod's brother Ahitob, son of Phinehas, the son of Eli, the Lord's priest in Shiloh. No one was aware that Jonathan had left. On each side of the pass that Jonathan intended to cross to reach the Philistine outpost was a cliff. One was called Bozes and the other Sene. One cliff stood to the north toward Michmash, the other to the south toward Giba. Jonathan said to his young armor bearer, Come, let's go over to the outpost of those uncircumcised fellows. Perhaps the Lord will act in our behalf. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. Do all that you have in mind, his armor bearer said. Go ahead, I am with you heart and soul. Jonathan said, Come then, we will cross over toward the men and let them see us. If they say to us, Wait there until we come to you, we will stay where we are and not go up to them. But if they say, come up to us, we will climb up, because that will be our sign that the Lord has given them into our hands. So both of them showed themselves to the Philistine outpost. Look, said the Philistines, the Hebrews are crawling out of the holes they were hiding in. The men of the outpost shouted to Jonathan and his armor-bearer, Climb up to us, and we'll teach you a lesson. So Jonathan said to his armor-bearer, Climb up after me, the Lord has given them into the hand of Israel. Jonathan climbed up, using his hands and feet, with his armor-bearer right behind him. The Philistines fell before Jonathan, and his armor-bearer followed and killed behind him. In that first attack, Jonathan and his armor-bearer killed some twenty men in an area of about half an acre. Then panic struck the whole army, those in the camp and field and those in the outposts and raiding parties, and the ground shook. It was a panic sent by God. Saul's lookout at Gibeah in Benjamin saw the army melting away in all directions. Then Saul said to the men who were with him, Master the forces and see who has left us. When they did, it was Jonathan and his armor bearer who were not there. Saul said to Ahijah, Bring the ark of God. At that time it was with the Israelites. While Saul was talking to the priest, the tumult in the Philistine camp increased more and more. So Saul said to the priest, Withdraw your hand. Then Saul and all his men assembled and went to the battle. 
they found the Philistines in total confusion, striking each other with their swords. Those Hebrews, who had previously been with the Philistines and had gone up with them to their camp, went over to the Israelites who were with Saul and Jonathan. When all the Israelites who had hidden in the hill country of Ephraim heard that the Philistines were on the run, they joined the battle in hot pursuit. So the Lord rescued Israel that day, and the battle moved on beyond Beth Avon. May God bless the reading of His Word. Now let's go into the sharing. Uh, today's sharing is about Jonathan attacking the Philistines. Who was Jonathan? Jonathan was King Saul's son. Children, do you all remember last Sunday sharing? Last Sunday, teacher Mei Cheng shared about Saul being made king. From then till this chapter, many things had happened. Uh, but let me just give you uh, a brief idea of uh, what had happened. Saul, right, Saul started well as king at first, but later he did not obey God's command. Samuel said to Saul, You have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. If you had, he would have established your kingdom over Israel for all time. But now your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him leader over his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. By then, Israel was in a very sad state. Due to the Israelites' earlier attack on a Philistine outpost, children, outpost means a military camp, all right? A military camp that's uh, away from the main army. So due to the Israelites' earlier attack on a Philistine outpost, they now face the threat of a battle with this enemy. The Philistines were a formidable enemy powerful and large enough to be feared. Why was that so? Because they had chariots and charities by the thousands, and their soldiers were as numerous as the sand on the seashore. This made the Israelites so fearful that they went into hiding wherever they could hide, in caves, among rocks, in cisterns, etc. Now, even many of Saul's men had left him, while those who remained with him, they were trembling with fear. Now, the Philistines had another advantage over the Israelites. They had taken control of all weapon-making activities. And of course, they made it very hard for the Israelites uh, to own weapons. Which was why uh, not a soldier with Saul and Jonathan had a sword or spear in his hand. Only Saul and Jonathan had them. That was the situation then. Uh, we shall now continue with today's sharing. Now a group of Philistines had gone out to the pass at this place called Michmash. So the enemies were getting nearer, the battle fast approaching. What about the Israelites? What have they done to prepare for the battle? Saul was under the pomegranate tree with his men, about 600 of them. We do not know what they were doing under the tree, but it's a picture of hopelessness, depression, or maybe even wanting to give up. But Saul's son Jonathan had great faith in the living God, and anyone with faith like that would not give up or give in. Jonathan said to his armor-bearer, Come, let's go over to the Philistine outpost on the other side. But Jonathan did not tell his father, so no one was aware that they had left. 
To reach the Philistine outpost, Jonathan had to cross a pass, and on each side of the pass was a cliff. Jonathan said to his armor bearer, Come, let's go over to the outpost of those uncircumcised fellows. Perhaps the Lord will act in our behalf. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. This means Jonathan was confident that if the Lord wants to save, he will save. Nothing can stop him from saving, not even numbers. The armor bearer said to Jonathan, Do all that you have in mind. Go ahead. I'm with you, heart and soul. Jonathan had a plan. He wanted to determine the sign that God would give the Philistine into their hands. The plan was like this. He and the, his armor bearer would make themselves visible to the Philistines. Jonathan said, If the Philistines say, Wait there until we come to you, we will stay where we are and not go up to them. But if they say, Come up to us, we will climb up, because that will be our sign that the Lord has given them into our hands. So they did as planned. They showed themselves to the Philistine outpost. The Philistines saw them. They said, look, the Hebrews are crawling out of the holes they were hiding in. Uh, the Philistines made fun of them. The Philistines shouted to Jonathan and his armor bearer, come up to us and we'll teach you a lesson. So what did that signal? Wow, was Jonathan excited. He said to his armor bearer, Climb up after me. The Lord has given them into the hand of Israel. So the two of them climbed up. They fought the Philistines and killed 20 of them in a small area. God was with Jonathan and his armor bearer. God struck the Philistines with panic and made the ground shake. From afar, Saul's men saw the Philistine army running in all directions. Saul did a count of his men and he discovered that uh, Jonathan and the armor bearer were not there. Unsure of what he should do, Saul asked Ahijah the priest to bring the ark of God. But then, the noise from the confusion in the camp grew louder and louder. Saul couldn't wait any longer to join the battle. So very quickly, he changed his mind about seeking God and said to the priest, Withdraw your hand. Then Saul and his men joined the battle. So children, do you think they played an active part in defeating the Philistines? No. Because by the time they joined the battle, the Philistines were already in total confusion, fighting each other instead of the Israelites. Who caused them to do that? God, of course. That day, the Lord rescued Israel from the hand of the Philistines. Uh, this is the end of the sharing. Let's see what lesson we can uh, learn from the passage. At the time when the situation seemed hopeless for the Israelites, what did Jonathan do? By faith, Jonathan stepped out boldly. He went into action. What made Jonathan so bold? Not that he had more men, right? There were only two of them. And not that he had better weapons. It was just because Jonathan knew God was with him, and that was enough. So Jonathan had great faith in God, and he acted on that faith. He stepped out fully trusting God, not looking at what were impossible. What were impossible then? Firstly, there were only two of them, as mentioned just now. All right, there were so many Philistines. And then, having to climb the cliff. Is it easy to climb a cliff? No, cliffs are very steep. Now they had to climb the cliff and then to fight the 
enemies, so it was impossible. But they did not let what seemed impossible stop them. Instead, they just fully trusted God. And God worked through them and for them to gain victory. How did God work through them? God gave them the strength to overcome the impossible. And God worked for them by sending out an earthquake, by causing panic and confusion among the Philistines and having them fight each other instead of the Israelites. Isn't God amazing? So we must have faith in God. Now children, take note. Huh? Faith calls for action. Huh? We have to do. It's not just talk with no action. All right. So we have to do and we have to act. If we say we have faith but we do not do or we dare not do, then it's as good as not having faith. That faith is dead. So to summarize the lesson, have faith in God, act on your faith, do not look at difficulties or obstacles, to fully trust God and God will work through you and for you to accomplish even what seems impossible. Impossible to us, not to God. Nothing is impossible to God. Let us now have a look at today's memory verse. It's Psalm 18, verse 1. Your memory verse, huh? And it says, I love you, O Lord, my strength. This psalm was written by David. David was the one chosen by God to replace Saul as king. Now David wrote this psalm out of love for God and out of gratitude toward God. Why? Because God protected and saved David from Saul and other enemies, not just once but again and again throughout his life. So David expressed his deep love for God. He also lovingly referred to God as his strength. Now in the passage we just read, God also helped Jonathan, right? So we say that David had reason to praise God. I suppose Jonathan also. Right, children? Now what about us? Do we have reason to do the same? To express our love for God? To uh, acknowledge His help and praise Him? Yes, we have and we should. In fact, we have countless reasons to do so. Firstly, because of who God is and also for his salvation. Remember God's gift of his one and only son, Jesus, and Jesus died and rose again so that we may have everlasting life. And what about God's never ending care? Now the list goes on and on, children, huh? because God's goodness and kindness are beyond counting. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the guidance and encouragement it provides. As the children continue in your word, may they learn to love you more and take delight in obeying your commands. Lord, please bless them to grow into people of faith and action, always willing to serve you and others. In Lord Jesus' name, Amen.